This is the TV that really launched this YouTube channel. And in this video, I want to take this guy apart to show you what's inside and explain how an LCD TV works. So this is the same 60 inch TV that I fixed for less than a dollar. And when I made that original video, I didn't think hardly anybody would watch it, but the video took off and it was my first one to get over a million views. So the first thing I want to show you is how the screen works to display the image. This TV has been working great for a number of years after that initial repair until someone's ball decided to hit the screen right about over here. So my pal has hit the end of the road because you can't fix a cracked LCD, but it does make a good candidate to take apart. There are a number of parts that all work together to make the image on the screen. This top part that you can feel isn't the thing that has the liquid crystals in it. It's something called a polarizing film, and it's just part of how the magic works to display the image. So in order to go further, I have to take off the back bezel, the front bezel, and then there's a metal frame holding down the LCD module in place. Can't believe it's been about five years since I took this TV apart. So this is what the TV looks like with the front plastic bezel removed. There are four metal pieces, one on each side that we have to remove to get to the LCD assembly. By the way, if you ever have to work on your backlight, you're gonna have to do the same process, take everything off because the backlight is behind the LCD screen. With the four metal edges taken off, now we can dig our way through the TV. By the way, if your LCD screen ever gets cracked, there's nothing you can do to fix it, but here's two tips that you can try. If you wanna remove all the plastic and some of the metal and take off the LCD screen like I've done here, what you're left with is a white diffused light that you could use for a workshop or your garage or even a light table. So the other thing you can do is sell the internal boards on a site like eBay and sometimes a main board or power supply, depending on the model, can fetch over $100. So here's the corner of the TV. You remove these plastic pieces and you can see there's all kinds of items here all stacked up on top of each other before you get to the metal frame of the TV. So what I've done here is I've spaced all of these items out with the metal frame in the back and the LCD in the front to explain what all of these things do. So in order for an LCD TV to work, you need a light source. The LEDs are usually attached to this metal frame in the back. Sometimes they're along the edge, like on this TV, and other times they take up the entirety of the frame that's called a full array LED. So with the LEDs on, you want all of the light to be passing this direction. And that's what our first part is there for. This is a white back sheet and the LEDs are usually in front of this white back sheet to reflect all the light forward. Next, we have a thick piece of plexiglass. This is called a light guide plate. And this is there to diffuse the light as much as possible. If anything escapes out the back, it bounces off that back sheet. Next, you have the light passing through this. This is called diffusion film and it helps mask any bright spots and smooths out the light to make it uniform. It then passes through what I think is another diffusion film to make sure that the light is even more uniform by the time it hits this one right here. This one's called a prism film or it's sometimes called a light brightener. All the light that's coming off of this one right here is coming out at every angle and then this one concentrates that light and has a brightening effect. This one isn't smooth like the other ones. It has a texture on one side. And if I zoom in with a light behind it, you can see what look like tiny little prisms. And I believe this film is one of the biggest factors to the viewing angle when you're watching the TV. So we have our light source, all the light coming this way, uniform light, concentrated light, hitting the back side of the LCD panel. And there's actually four more parts in here before this light hits your eye. Here's a different LCD that I've messed with in the corner so we can see what those four parts are. So this is the outward facing part of the screen. And remember I said the part that you touch is a polarizing film. That's what this is. I've peeled a little bit of it back here and it goes all the way over to right about here where I've kind of scraped it away. This is just a piece of plexiglass with everything sandwiched in there. And then the polarizing film is glued down on the top and it's also glued in underneath. And so imagine this is the backlight. Without the polarizing film, the light just goes right through. But if I go over here, you can see it's dark and just imagine it's more diffused and it just, you can't really even see it. So two of the parts are the front and rear polarizing films. And then the others, if we zoom all the way in, we can see the liquid crystal display and the electronics, as well as the color film that's in there that makes each of those subpixels look red, green, or blue. So the way this works is that light comes in, gets polarized all the same direction, hits the liquid crystal display. The TV's computer tells each subpixel how much to bend to get the right intensity of light and then that goes through a red, green, or blue color filter. And then that light comes through this final polarizing film and you see the color at that pixel that you're supposed to see. So you need both polarizing films to make this whole thing work. And say you just had polarizing film on the back but not on the front, here's what would happen. You would just have a white image all across the screen and you wouldn't really be able to see anything. 
On the other side of the metal frame are the circuit boards that are running the TV. Now, depending on the model, there could be as little as one of these boards on here, or maybe up to six or more. On this TV, there are three of them, which makes it a little easier to explain what's going on here. Let's start right here where you plug in the TV and work our way up to where the cables plug into the LCD. So the main job of the power supply is to convert the alternating current to direct current. Nothing in the TV runs off of alternating current, and it produces several different voltages to run different parts of the TV. For example, there's power to those LED backlights that happens down here. And then here's the power and the communication that goes to the main board. The main board is the main brains of the TV. It also has the inputs like the HDMI ports. It also has a cable like this. So if you see one of these, this is the Wi-Fi antenna. This will be handling all your streaming services if you're doing it over Wi-Fi. And it takes the data from those inputs and gets it ready to send to the LCD screen. And it gets sent out through these two cables. These two cables go up to this board. It's called the timing control board or the TCON board for short. This is the board that I repaired in that original video. To display the image correctly on the LCD, where the data comes through these cables, requires precision timing. Both the vertical and horizontal lines have to match up at the right time, and that's the job of the timing control board. So something else that's interesting is on the front here, here's the panel by itself. There are two different types of metal. There's steel, which is the main structural element of the TV, but then there's also this big aluminum piece up here. And I know it's aluminum, because I have a magnet and it doesn't, it doesn't stick to the aluminum. And this is the big heat sink for that LED strip. So if you enjoyed this video, consider giving it a thumbs up. And perhaps if you liked it, you might like this one over here.